Okay, this video, let's take a look at a decentralized mechanical HVAC system. Now, just for starters, I'm not a mechanical engineer. Um, I won't get into uh, what systems are better. I just want, you know, I'm going to look at it from an architectural technologist standpoint um, as being the ones that have to coordinate this stuff uh, into the building. Uh, so this is, you know, this is a video for people that just have no understanding, say, of, of mechanical systems for commercial buildings. But this particular video will focus on a decentralized system. And so when I say decentralized, what I'm getting at is um, there, there's a whole bunch of uh, what I call rooftop units on the roof. So these are mechanical units. So just think of them like your furnace or air conditioner in, in a house. So there's, there's a whole bunch along the, along the roof of this building. And so each one of those units you see there are going to be... Um, distributed air, whether that be heated or cooled to, to a space, and there'll be a return air go to them as well. And so these types of systems are, are really common in um, retail and I'd say industrial settings. Um, it's just really common to do these independent decentralized um, systems. And so just for comparison purposes, this, this would be a centralized system. So this building here, it's uh, like a two-story office building with retail on the main floor and um, it, it's it's got a centralized mechanical room so that'd be where the, the boilers are and things like that to, for to get heated water um, and then there's a central a really large rooftop unit basically uh, which is going to distribute air to uh, multiple tenants throughout this building and sometimes you see a combination of both like so you know in this case right here it could be that um, this centralized system is only going to be for the office floors and then the retail floors might have an independent system uh, within their spaces but I think in this building in particular that's a centralized system for the whole for the whole building okay so back to our lovely uh, retail setting here so let's just zoom in on uh, this place right here and you can you can see there's one tenant right here okay so taking up this area and so they, that one tenant has this one unit Okay, so this one unit's going to distribute um, air, you know, to the to this entire unit. Uh, this tenant over here uh, obviously took three bays in here, so they're going to have uh, three units to distribute air into their space. The reason it would be designed this way is that you know potentially this could be four tenants in here, and there'd be walls put in between each one, and then each tenant has a rooftop unit to attach to. So when a bigger tenant goes in, they just they just happen to get more units. But certainly, if you knew this was going to be one tenant here, there could have been one larger um, rooftop unit for the whole tenant. But that just doesn't create a lot of flexibility uh, for the future. So that's why it's done this way. And, and something else I should, I should note as well is that quite often, um, maybe this, let's take a look at what this building has here. No, um, this one's pretty straightforward. But it's quite often too, you'll see like, you know, if we had this this smaller tenant here, let's say, has a big open um, public space in the front. So there might be one unit that distributes air for that area. And then there might be a smaller unit in the back that is designed to distribute air to the office areas or whatever. So that's, that's common as well. Now, again, not a mechanical engineer, but uh, you know, uh, my understanding is that the decentralized systems are obviously very uh, flexible uh, you know, for, for design purposes when you don't know what your tenants are gonna be uh, over the years. but um, the centralized system, I, from my understanding, is a more efficient system, but would cost more as well up front to, uh, to put in place. And, and also, you'd have to think about, you know, the taller your building gets, um, the more complicated it would get to do this decentralized system, because you have to get air from the roof down to every, every space, basically, in the building. So it, just, it would become unfeasible at some point in a, in a tall building, as an example. Okay, so let's just analyze uh, one of these decentralized systems. So we'll look at this building right here, which uh, is two-story uh, multi-tenant building. So there's one office space over here, another office space over here, and there's one retail space here, here, and there's another one around the corner as well. Okay, so moving on up to the roof plan here, um, I've highlighted the... the uh, rooftop units for this for this building. So there's six um, independent uh, rooftop units for this building. So again, each each one of these units will be serving uh, a tenant in this building. Or as we'll see, I, I, I believe these two tenants are serving one space in the building. Okay, so here's our second floor and I've highlighted the tenants. So the orange is one tenant, second tenant, and the green is the common area between the tenants. And the other thing I've done here is I've um, 
I've dashed in where those rooftop units above are so that we know where they are so we can analyze what's happening here. So let's just um, go over to this corner right here and take a look at what's happening. Okay, so I'll start by pointing out that um, when you see um, an X through something, that is a vertical section of a supply duct. So the supply air um, from this unit on the roof is coming down right here and it goes horizontal. Okay, this way and it looks like it drops down again and then goes horizontal this way and then horizontal this way and it's dropping down again so what's happening there is the supply air from that unit is probably I, I didn't dig into the drawings too much but probably it's coming down from the unit through the roof then there's a, a horizontal duct um, and it probably has to drop down again to get underneath some some roof joists or something like that some structure so it's dropped down again but this would be in the ceiling of this tenant would be these these ducts, so 750 by 450 deep duct. And then the return air for this uh, unit is right here. So whenever you're looking at return ducts that are in the vertical, they have one line through them like this. Okay, so you have a return duct um, coming uh, up from the main floor. So up, and again, this is at the ceiling of this uh, tenant right here, and then it goes across this way and then up into that uh, rooftop unit above. So that one unit there is not serving this tenant on this floor at all. It's uh, it's dedicated to obviously a tenant on the main floor. Okay, so this uh, other duct or this other rooftop unit here is kind of the same idea where the supply is coming down this way and going like that. And the return is like this. I should have made that supply red to be consistent here. Okay, so neither of these units are serving um, this second floor tenant space. So how is how are we getting air to the second floor tenant space? Well, it's with these two units right here. Okay, so the space was big enough that they put two units in there. Um, and basically, because this is a base building, um, what what you're seeing here is that the uh, the units on the roof and then the supply duct just pokes through the roof into the ceiling space of the tenant. And same for the return air there as well. There's the thermostat there, which would be put on that column right there. And here's the other unit with the same idea. So um, what will happen here is because this is a base building, you know, they, we don't know the, the layout of the tenant space yet. So the tenant will come in and put in boardrooms and offices and all that kind of stuff. And then they just tie into um, the supply and return ducts and distribute air uh, throughout their space as needed. Now, sometimes in wide open areas, like I'll go into this cost code right here, uh, sometimes there's no ductwork uh, just ductwork distribution from that main unit. So if I uh, look at the main sales area here, I can see I can see a supply air duct there and a return right there. So that means there's a rooftop unit on the roof right there. Here's another one right here. So supply air is coming out right there, and that's the return air. So there's a rooftop unit right above there. And so in this case, because it's a big open space, there's there's no need to run um, ductwork everywhere. And so they just opted to do it that way. It looks like there's another one down there as well. So if we go back to the roof plan on that, um, you know, a lot of these units here would just be supplying air to the, the main sales area. And these other ones might be for, you know, loading area and office areas. Who knows? These ones up here are probably for the, at the checkouts to this building or something like that. So whether they run ducks from them uh, into, into spaces or not is, is optional, I guess, in some cases when you when you have big open areas. Okay, so let's just take a look at what's happening over in this uh, other tenant space here. Okay, so rooftop unit there, then supply is coming down here and going that way and that way and then down to the main floor there. And the return is coming this way from below through the ceiling this way and up into the unit right there. Okay, so that one's being dedicated to the main floor, obviously. And then for this, this floor, this is kind of interesting because um, they've got this one unit here, obviously, for the same, you know, to for this tenant space right here. And there's the thermostat on the, on the uh, supposed to be on the column right there. And they've also run a small duct from the supply, and they've um, put it into the corridor there. Okay, so there's the supply duct there, and it's shooting some air into that common area so you still need air in the common areas um, obviously so you know there, there could be a separate unit for the common areas but in this case they're going to make i guess this tenant pay for the heating of this common area 
uh, in this case. And oftentimes you don't uh, see a return duct because uh, the corridors um, sometimes are wanting to be pressurized because pressurizing them um, helps contain sound and smells into the suite. So maybe that's what's happening there because I do not see a return duct for that one. <laughs> Likely that tenant would have no idea that they're paying for that space right there. So you might notice there's a couple of other things going on here. So um, I, I looked into this and this is a exhaust duct right here. Okay, coming up from the main floor and it goes along the ceiling of the space and then goes up onto the roof. Okay, so that's, that's an exhaust for a kitchen hood fan or something like that. So this would be kind of the same idea. And how do I know that? I just read note 60. Sorry, it wasn't note, well, I did read note 16. So it says there's a duct to above. And then if I go to above, it's note 12. And then it talks about the kitchen exhaust duct. Okay, so moving on down to the main floor, let's see what's happening here. So here's one tenant here, here's one tenant here, there's the common area, and there's another tenant right, right there. And so back to the second floor here, looking at this unit. So remember, we have the ducts going down to the main floor, and then we go down to the main floor right here. And here are the supply and return ducts for this space. So the supply is right here, and the return is right here. So again, uh, they don't know the, the layout of that tenant space. This is just based building, so the tenant would tie into those two locations for their supply and return, and there's a thermostat floating nowhere, so probably you'd be better suited on the column there. Okay, and for this tenant over here, uh, same idea. So this unit right here had a supply going down and return going down, and so if we look at that, what's happening here is there's that supply coming down and across and then into the space here. And the return is this way, like that. So same kind of idea. They don't know you know, what the tenant's gonna do there. So the tenants would tie into those points right there. And the other thing it means here is that this tenant over here is gonna have some ducts along the ceiling in their space, basically. And now the other thing to make note of here is we have a, another duct right here, a 150 diameter duct. And that's an exhaust duct for the future bathroom. So again, the the landlord doesn't know where the, what the tenant's going to do there, where they're going to put their bathroom, but they're, they're going to put their rough-ins for them, um, especially because they're on the main floor. Um, it's going to be hard to exhaust their their space. So they've they've run a, a exhaust duct into their space that's going to go up right here. And I just read note six. If we go to six, it's a 150 diameter washer exhaust duct. And for the other space, same idea. Uh, you don't see it very well there, but it's hidden right there. There's that note six. And then if we go over to this space, it's kind of the same idea. So there's some ducts coming down, but this one has a bunch of exhaust uh, ducts coming out of there as well. And so I was just reading the notes and the 17 is for kitchen exhaust. So hood fan over the, uh, the, the kitchen. And this, this three right here is for the washroom. So it's a little bit bigger than the other ones because this is going to be a restaurant. So they've got a bit of a bigger um, exhaust for the future washrooms. And then there's a supply and return. And so let's just uh, finish up here by looking at the common space. So we know that we got some supply air into the second floor here. I suspect there's a bit of a mistake here. Um, my gut feeling is probably on this building they probably wanted this stair open right here, uh, but because it's being used as an exit, they would have had to close it off basically. So it, it, this this stair is closed off from the second floor common area there, which if we go down to the main floor, um, oh, I see actually that stair comes comes down right here. Uh, what, what I'm finding interesting here is I don't know the answer to it, but I don't see any supply air for this main floor. Um, common area. I was just reading through the notes here like this these are air conditioners in the roof or at least that one is. Um, this one here the nine is for an electric force force flow heater so they're heating the space by electric there's there's one there as well uh, but you still need some um, air circulation so I, just, I think that was uh, probably missed so they're going to heat these common areas with electric but you still have to have some makeup air of some sort for that space, I would think. But again, I'm not an engineer, a uh, mechanical engineer, but uh, I have a feeling something's kind of missing there. And then on the second floor common area, again, they got the air conditioning unit there, and it looks like a baseboard heater of some sort there, there and whatnot. So there's no primary mechanical room for, um, for this building. 
uh, as far as the HVAC is concerned, okay, so for air delivery. But if we go down to the main floor here, um, there is still a main um, mechanical room, but this is this is the sprinkler room and uh, water meter room is what that is. So um, it depends where you are, but you know, in the in the city I live in, um, you have to have a the sprinkler room and and, um, and meter room have to be right on the exterior wall. And I think I'm trying to remember, I think usually accessible from the outside as well. Uh, so that's what that is right there. So there's a big sprinkler tree and then a water meter in there. So still need that mechanical room for that purpose. And then as far as, you know, um, as far as water lines go, there's just a, a water line taken from that room that's run through the ceiling. And again, just it's just taken to the tenant spaces. And then the tenant would tie into the, this one's going to a host bib outside, but this one right here, that's the cap off for the future tenant for water. So then when the tenant comes in, they only have cold water coming out of there because there's no heating source for that water. So the tenant then would um, put in a, a hot water heating device, whether it be a tank system. A lot of times it's just a tank system that hangs from the ceiling, but it could be an on-demand wall mount um, type as well. And so they get water supply to each tenant and same goes for sanitary, so there's a sanitary cap off, so there's a sanitary line under the slab here, it's dashed, so it means it's under the, under the floor. And there's a cap off here, if I were to read note 7, there's, um, that's the, the sanitary uh, tie-in for the tenant. So each tenant would have a sanitary tie-in, there's theirs there, and, and there's that one there. So again, don't, don't know where the, where the um, tenants are going to put their washrooms and have, need that sanitary tie-in or, or whatever. Um, but uh, that it's there for them to tie into um, when, when that tenant fit out happens. Usually um, when I was working on these buildings, I, you know, we would just pick a back corner and just say, okay, well, this, this corner here is where we're gonna take all the rough-ins. So I, we'd pick a corner and then we'd take the sanitary rough-in there, the water line cap off and the exhaust fan uh, all to one area. And sometimes even not even pour the slab in that area um, so they could get into them easy. But, uh, that, that's kind of how this works, so hopefully um, that was informative for some people.